G'day guys, it's Nigel here. Well today I'm reviewing this saxophone, it's the John Paul AS400, just to see if this might be the best student saxophone for you to consider if you're looking for your first saxophone. Because these days there really are so many options and I want to make that buying process for you a little bit easier. So in today's video I'm going to be having a look inside the box, showing you what comes with this saxophone. I'm also going to be giving it a really good play test and actually as a bit of a bonus I'm going to be doing a shootout comparison between this saxophone and my two other altos, a uh, standard sort of classic Yamaha 23 my old Zebra saxophone, and my main pro saxophone, which is a Yamaha 62. So you can actually compare side by side how this saxophone sounds. There's loads to talk about in today's video, so stick around. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Let's get started. Hey, thanks for joining me for another one of these videos. It's great to have you here, and I really hope this video helps you. If you haven't subscribed, then consider clicking that subscribe button too, so you do get notified about future videos that I'm putting out. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I'm always mentioning that we've got thousands of learners learning with Sax School. We really do have a huge learner community. So as you can imagine, the conversations about which saxophone to choose are coming up all the time. And this is the reason why I like to test new saxophones. And I ask manufacturers like Jean Paul to send me them out so that I can put them through their paces and let you know what they sound like and hopefully help you to make a good decision about which saxophone to go for. Now, if you want to get a head start in the whole buying process, I have a fantastic resource for you. It's called our Saxophone Buyer's Guide, and that's available on our blog, but you can also get it from our locker. I'll put a link down below. The locker is absolutely free. You just need to give us your email so that we can send you the details to log in. Inside there, you'll find the Saxophone Buyer's Guide, which is a brilliant resource. But inside the locker, we've got all of our free resources in there too. So that's a fantastic starting point if you're looking for some help with learning saxophone and want to find a little bit out about what we do with Sax School. It's absolutely free, link down below. So let's start having a look at this John Paul AS400. Now, all saxophones in this beginner price range are made in China. That's just the way it is, and there's nothing wrong with that because there are some fantastic saxophones coming out of China these days, really, really great quality. But I have to say right out the gate, the quality of the case for the John Paul is really fantastic because some of the cheaper Chinese saxophones do come in pretty shoddy cases. This looks fantastic. I love the way it's got a pocket in the front here where you can store some stuff. Yeah, we've got a shoulder strap here as well. So that shoulder strap will go on these rings on the top of the saxophone. But actually on the back, you can see there's also zip away shoulder carrying straps too, which is a brilliant idea because you know, not everybody wants a shoulder strap, but if you're catching a bus or commuting a little bit with your saxophone, the shoulder straps are actually a really good idea. Let's have a look inside the case. Okay, nice, look at this. So this is literally the first time that I've opened this saxophone up. So it's still wrapped in its traveling bag. Um, what's interesting too about the saxophone is they actually shipped this from America to me. Uh, so I'm wondering how it's fared with the transport because there's a good chance, particularly with COVID and everything, that if you're buying a saxophone, you're going to get it shipped to you. I'm based in the UK, but they ship this from their base, which I think is in Miami in the States. Um, but you know, equally, there's people buying saxophones from the UK in America and getting them shipped out to the States. So they're going across the countries all the time. How do they fare? Well, we'll find out today. Okay, so there's the neck. Nice, I can see that this has actually had some setup work done too to make sure the neck fits, that's good to see. And then this is the body. Ooh, look at that, it's a good looking saxophone, isn't it? Every saxophone comes with a cap on the top like this, but this one has got a cap that actually protects your octave mechanism. I haven't seen that before, it's a really good idea because that's actually a place that often gets damaged on particularly beginner saxophones. Right, I'll try that out in a second. Let's have a look at what else comes in the case in here. So we've got a little thank you for buying card. Makes me feel very happy, thank you very much. We've also got in here, oh look. So it's come with a mouthpiece, but there's another mouthpiece here. I'm not quite sure why there's two different ones. We'll have a look at that in a second. Neck strap, some cork grease, a little instruction manual. Shows us how to do the setup, how to do the assembly care and maintenance, and it's also got some warranty information on the back. We've also got a cleaning cloth. Oh, look, 
They even gave us a little reed to get us started. That's brilliant. Oh, and actually, this is a Rico reed size two. Now, that's actually pretty cool because a lot of the Chinese branded saxophones will come with some obscure Chinese brand of reed. Generally, I find them to be a bit rubbish. But Rico is a standard one that every beginner in the Western world uses. So that's actually a nice touch. So for consistency, I'll be using my standard mouthpiece, which is a Jody Jazz Custom Dark Size 7 mouthpiece. Because this is the one I'm familiar with and it'll be the best way for me to demonstrate the saxophone. If you are getting yourself a brand new saxophone though, it's always a good idea to put some cork grease onto the neck cork. It just helps the mouthpiece to go on and protects the cork and avoids any sort of strain things that can happen by forcing a mouthpiece on. I'm using a Legere Signature size 2.5 reed on this as well. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So right out the gate, this saxophone is playing great. Even though it's been shipped halfway around the world, everything is sealing and I can get right down to the low B and B flat, no worries at all. In fact, the mechanism feels really, really nice. Okay, so let's have a listen to what it sounds like. I'm gonna have a go at playing it through now in a couple of different styles and then in a minute, we'll get to our shootout with my other altos to see how it compares tone-wise. Here we go. Oh, I should just say the John Paul AS400 is $599.95. It's available from the John Paul website and they do ship all around the world as well. There's a link down below where you can go and check it out. <laughs> What do you think about the sound of that? Do you like it in that sort of jazzy style? Let me know in a comment down below. I'm going to have a go at playing it now with a band backing track like a groove just to see how it performs in a mix of a band. Let's have a listen. <laughs> about that. Do you prefer the sound of it in a band setting? I think it fares quite well and actually one of my concerns was the sound's very dark on the saxophone and I wasn't sure how it would project through the band but I actually think it fits in really really well. All right let's have some fun because I promised you that we would do a shootout between the John Paul AS400 and two other altos so let's do that right now. So what I'm going to do is pop on a track and play a couple of bars improvising on each saxophone. I'm going to start with the John Paul and then I'm going to blow on this which is my Zebra Yamaha YAS23. This is a proper workhorse student model alto from the 70s. I took mine and zebra, zebra-fied it. You can watch the video of how I did that up here actually. Uh, this is the sort of saxophone you'd get if you were learning in school. Uh, there's tons of these on eBay. In fact, I bought this cheap on eBay and then had it serviced and it's a great playing saxophone and perhaps something you'd consider as an alternative if you're looking for a used horn uh, instead of buying the John Paul. Yours won't look like a zebra, but they're not bad instruments. And the third saxophone in the mix is my pro level Yamaha 62. It's a standard, like a classic purple logo one from the 80s. I've had this since 1987. Uh, this is a great horn, but it's roughly five times the cost of the John Paul. So it's really just in there as a bit of a comparison so you can listen to the different sounds. So what I'd like you to do is have a listen to as I, each of the three instruments as I play them. 
and see if you can detect any differences. Let me know in a comment. Does one sound different to the other? Is it brighter, darker? I'd love to hear what your comments are. Okay, here we go. <laughs> difference between the three saxophones uh, for me I thought it was quite interesting actually because I'm obviously a lot more comfortable on the purple logo 62 I've been playing that instrument for decades and it's my main saxophone so the key system and everything feels a lot more comfortable to me and I can move faster on that saxophone but I have to tell you for a saxophone that's less than 600 pounds or 600 US dollars this is actually an amazing saxophone it plays really really great the tone is great, the intonation's fantastic, uh, the way it seals over the whole range is brilliant, it gets right up into the altissimo, the overtones are brilliant, it's got a lovely dark sound to it, which I wasn't sure about at first, but I really got used to. Uh, I liked using this Jody Jazz Custom Dark mouthpiece with it, that seemed to really give it some zing, but I'd be interested to try a few different mouthpieces if I was choosing this as my everyday horn. The only things that I found that I weren't quite happy with, there's a on the table keys here for my left hand, I found it quite difficult going from B to C sharp. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's an adjustment thing or just a design thing. And then down here, my little fingers between the D sharp and C. That's it's a bit of, it's a bit sharp. There's a few sharp corners in there, and it doesn't really move very smoothly for me. But really those are minor points because overall this is a fantastic saxophone and as an entry level saxophone that you might choose as your beginner horn, if they all come out of the shop and to your door like this, then you're making a good choice. So I think this is a lovely saxophone. I hope that's been useful to you. Let me know in a comment what you think. I'd love to get some feedback from you or if you play one of these or if you've got any comments. Uh, I'd love to know and it would really help all of our other members as well. Hey, don't forget to grab the saxophone buying guide that I mentioned. It's in the locker. You can get it from the courses page on our website, saxschoolonline.com or from the link down below. And if you're curious to know a bit more about what we do inside Sax School, then as I'm filming this, we do have a 14 day trial running where you can jump in and get access to everything actually. You can try the lessons, get some help from our tutors, come and attend a masterclass, even connect with our community. There's tons of stuff to do that to do in there and that's all over at saxschoolonline.com too. Hey, thanks very much for watching uh, and as always, keep practicing hard. I'll catch you next time.